now. And then you got Tulane and the Air Force. Um, these two teams are sitting at um, 24 and 25. Air Force fresh off of their first loss of the season, losing the Army by 20. And then uh, Tulane has been really good all year except for the Ole Miss game. That's it. But they haven't really been able to make any traction or anything like that. And I, I wouldn't think that they would be playing in any, you know, New Year's Eve Bowl or anything like that. So the AP Top 25 will will have a new – we'll have some – we'll have them veiling tonight and we'll see exactly where we're at, you know, tonight. But right now I see the top four not really changing out. So – with that, let's go ahead and move forward and talk about is Ohio State the best team in the nation or is just the committee shining up the game? Well, with Ohio State, I feel like Ohio State, um, are they the best team in the nation? Maybe, maybe not. But I think right now, if you put Ohio State up against every top team in their conference outside of Georgia and Michigan, they beat them. You know, if you put line them up with Florida State the way – Florida State's had some close calls this year. Ohio State will probably beat them by 10 or better. Um, Michigan, right now, when you look at it, I would say that probably Michigan has a little bit of the edge. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say Michigan has a big edge because I know Michigan has this idea that they have some type of dominant thing going on over Ohio State because they won the last two years. But – Let's go ahead and rewind the last 20 years and see that Ohio State's beat them the last 18 out of 22 times they played. So, you know, Ohio State is still leading in, in the clubhouse when it comes to that. But all in all, though, the, the past is the past. The present is right now. And right now, when you look at it on paper and see the way that these teams won games, Michigan is leagues ahead of Ohio State right now because Michigan hasn't had one close game this year. All of Michigan's games have been absolute blowouts, and that is not good for the recipe that's coming up the next two weeks. They got two of their toughest games before they see Ohio State. And then when they get to Ohio State, it's going to be in Ann Arbor. But the pressure is that much more crazier when the game is in, in uh, Ann Arbor because they expect them to be so dominant and so great that day that, you know, it should be a great day for Michigan. But Ohio State wants to play spoiler this year because Ohio State knows that they have the possibility of still being in the Final Four this year because they have the strength of schedule to back them up. That's the whole thing. Michigan has to beat Ohio State. That's the whole thing at the end of the day. But the way that this thing is shaping up, you see that they quite possibly might sneak in two Pac-12 teams, maybe, you know, but they're going to try to get a Pac-12 team into the Final Four. Let's keep it real. It's the final year of the Pac-12, and they want to send the Pac-12 out on a high note. And that's why you've had a lot of Pac-12 teams in the top 25 this year. So when you get the really good one, they can have an opportunity at the CFP. This is politics right here. But Ohio State's not worried about that. Ohio State's only worried about Michigan State this weekend, and that's going to be a tough game regardless of how anybody spins it because Michigan State feels like they're a rival to Ohio State, and Michigan State has been a spoiler when they weren't expected to be a few times against Ohio State. And the way that this team is setting up right now, they ain't that great. They don't. They, they have an interim coach. You know what I mean? They have all the motivation in the world to be a spoiler on Saturday because they have nothing to lose. That's the whole thing. And Ohio State knows that. So it's going to be a really good game against Old Sparty. And Ohio State needs to really send a message in this one, in my opinion. They truly do need to send a message in this one to say that they are a dominant group because a lot of people aren't convinced with McCord at quarterback. But McCord is just like Craig Krenzler, dude. He, they're, these guys are, are game managers. They're playing with talented guys. All they got to do is just not fuck it up. That's it. That's all, that, that's all the coach asks them to do. The Ohio State – Buckeyes rely on the run game this year, and they rely on being physical. And then they got Marvin Harris, the best receiver in the nation. If, you, if you're if you going to be stupid enough to stick him one-on-one, he's going to shred you all game long. 
And then you got Ubeka, you got Fleming, you got the freshmen. You got a lot of good things going on with this team. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it shakes out. But Ohio State does have the target on their back, and we all just are getting ourselves prepared for the game. This one is going to be just as big as the game was a decade ago when you had both Ohio State and Michigan both coming in there at one and two undefeated. That was absolutely crazy um, with uh, Troy Smith and Mike Hart. So that was that. If they are able to get to that point again, it's going to be absolutely bedlam that week and that weekend as well, too. But with that, we move forward. Let's go ahead and jump into our next, which is going to be the Big 12. Will not be a part of the CFP with any scenario. Um, I just hate to say it, but after Oklahoma lost 